Today on At Your Leisure, we're going underground and on top of the water. But not at the same time. I'm Darren Kinder. And I'm Jill Kinder. We're at Panguitch Lake Adventure Resort and we're going to find out what you can do in the resort as well as the area around it. From there, Zach Cipriano is going to learn the history about a trail in southern Utah and learn how it impacts his adventure. Finally, Reese Stein learns how long it takes to train a Mustang. Own the outdoors with At Your Leisure right now. Welcome to At Your Leisure, I'm Jill Kinder. And I'm Darren Kinder, and we're here at Panguitch Lake Adventure Resorts, and uh, we're on the original ATV. It's only one horsepower, but it's still a lot of fun. That's right, one horsepower. This is great, it's such a beautiful place. This has been a great time so far. We've got so much to do here, horseback riding, ATVing, fishing, hunting. I'm sure that I'm missing something. Oh yeah, you just play here all the time. So, have you ever been headed down through Panguitch and you know you always have to make that left turn? Well, this time you just go straight down. So, it's not US Highway 89, it's Highway 143. And it takes you, you can go from here, you can go over to Cedar Breaks and Brian Head, and there's all kinds of adventure out here, and it's absolutely beautiful. And we are so excited. Let's check it out. Panquich Lake has a long history as a family fishing resort. Uh, Panquich, it's a Paiute Indian word, it means big fish. And the Native Americans fished here for centuries for trout. Then, about a hundred years ago, the pioneers came here and they built a dam, which also turned it into a reservoir, raised the natural lake another 24 feet. People really enjoy the lake. We also have cabins out here for rent, RV lots for rent. We have ATV trails, boat rentals. People like enjoy the horseback riding at the resort. We take uh, an hour and a half ride. It goes up through the forest and then down by the lake. And then the 45 minute ride goes to the lake and back. And it's just a leisure, enjoyable ride. People sometimes don't know how to ride horses. So we have horses that they can ride and get the experience they need and then ha go out on the trails and, ha and they have a blast when they get back. But there's a lot of culture here too. There used to be a dance hall, a cheese factory, a racetrack. The average summer temperature is only, you know, 75 to 85 degrees during the day and around the 50s at night. So it's, it's a really nice, relaxing, peaceful place to get away from the city. You can go ATV riding, fishing, horse riding, or hiking, and it will relax them. Your phones don't work, and so sometimes they panic a little bit, but once they learn to relax and get rid of their phones, then they're like, wow, this is heaven because there's no stress up here. Get away and, and enjoy life and, and get away from the traffic and the hustle bustle of the big city and just come out here and relax and enjoy. It is just amazing how much this resort has to offer. You, you kind of expect the fishing since mm -hmm. we're at a lake and of course the dog playing in the water, that's always yeah. fun. Yeah, Pudge is never leaving. <laughs> she, this is heaven for her. But this is, it has so much more to offer with the ATVing, the horseback riding, and plus in a little bit, we're gonna go off site. So if you use this as your base camp, there are several great places to go right around here. And so you can go off and then come back uh, and spend the night, enjoy the restaurant, whatever you want to do yeah. there. Well, right now we need to get to our travel adventure, and that's with Zach Cipriano, and he's going to show us the more you know about a trail, the more you can enjoy it. As adventurers, it's easy to set out on a trail completely immersed in our own surroundings. We mentally catalog every aspect of the experience, appreciating each nuance and shade of color, but often the trail itself ends up at the bottom of that list. These lonely paths are our access points, and it's easy to forget their importance when we don't know anything about how they were made or what goes into keeping them open. Outside of Kanab, Utah, there are literally thousands of miles of trails, each one with a tale to tell. Hog Canyon is one of my personal favorites, and today I rode with members of the UTAZ ATV Club, including former Commissioner Mark Habishaw, who had a hand in molding Hog Canyon into the premier southern Utah track. 
Hog Canyon started a little before I moved here, uh, which was 1997, and there wasn't much here. I joined the uh, Canyon Country 4x4 Club and started developing trails here. The ATV Club almost simultaneously started developing ATV trails. And we had a little bit of conflict because we liked the rocks and they liked the sand, so we were kind of braiding. So we came up here together and looked at things and worked all that out. And so we have the trail system that you see today because of that effort. The Hog Canyon trail system itself runs about eight miles going east to west and between three and four miles going north to south. But within this patch of land are several trails interwoven amongst an ever-changing desert landscape. Hog Canyon also serves as a route to several other connecting trail systems as well, making it the perfect jumping off point for an adventure in Kanab. It just multiplies the options that visitors have, that local people have, to jump on their rig and, and head out and have a good experience in a short amount of time. Now locals aren't the only riders who appreciate Hog Canyon and the off-highway access afforded here. You wouldn't think that one small town on Highway 89 would be seen as an international destination, but over the last decade, that's exactly what Kanab has become. It's about a 400 mile drive here, but it just, we enjoy the, the local scenery and the local people that show us the trail system. Luckily, there's no shortage of places to stay in this recreational paradise either. We have uh, several new hotels. There's also RV parks. We're camped right at the base of Hog Canyon, dry camping in RV. Oh, it's convenient, easy. We're out of town, we're out of the city. It's an amazing ride, beautiful country. We love the club down here, they're wonderful people. That club is one of the reasons access is so good here along the Arizona border. The UTAZ ATV Club takes their stewardship of the trails very seriously, understanding that the true wonder of this area lies in its beauty. Hence why they expend such efforts to keep the trails clean and aesthetically pleasing. The UDAZ uh, Club and the uh, Canyon Country 4x4 Club have adopted uh, the Hog Canyon area because of the history and their involvement in the designation of the area as an OHB recreational area. They respect the, the environment down here. The trails are extremely clean. We've not seen any garbage. They, they want their trails to stay open and so they do take care of them to ensure that the trails do keep, stay open. Every trail has a story and learning them only adds to your experience. This is not my first time riding the Hog Canyon Trail System, but knowing more about how it was made and the personal experiences riders have enjoyed here has accentuated my own love of this area. Every time I ride my ATV from my hotel in Kanab, I discover a new piece of beauty. I, for one, was introduced to these giant stones called the Pinnacles, and this is only the beginning to what you'll find. It takes you to areas where, like this one we're at right now, where you can uh, oversee the city of Kanab, and I'm uh, partially handicapped, so it allows me to get to places I'd never be able to see without an ATV. Just come and see how beautiful the rocks are, and I mean, the, the environment, the people that you meet down here. I mean, it's an incredible ride. Um, we're gonna be here for three more days just doing awesome riding. Well guys, here we are at the pinnacle of our adventure. Get it? Because these are, these are called the pinnacles. <clears throat> Sorry, that was kind of a lame joke, but this was not a lame ride. It's so easy to get here from your hotel, wherever you're staying in Kanab, I would highly recommend you making this city your destination for your next vacation. Now, there are a lot of hotels, but they fill up quick, so uh, make sure you jump on that. Well, I'm Zach Cipriano. We're gonna take a quick commercial break, but when we come back, we're gonna have your product review, so don't go anywhere. How do I get down from here? place that is beyond words. There is nothing to be said, except take your time in Bryce Canyon country. Dominate every trail, conquer any task. You need a machine that does it all. Introducing Polaris General. The General is the most powerful rec utility side-by-side -side ever made. 
The industry's deepest cargo box lets you haul and dump up to 600 pounds, and the revolutionary cockpit totally refines comfort and protection. Polaris General, ultimate versatility to win every battle. There's a little place on a Utah map where I was raised, where my heart's at, where the sagebrush grows wild and high, and the stars come out at night. Oh, there ain't nothing like being raised in the basin with the Ute reservation, skin starvation, that Duchesne County life. I'm Chris Haller, Utah Division of Parks and Recreation Off-Highway Vehicle Program Coordinator. And today we're here to talk about how you can protect your brain. A couple key things when selecting a helmet is to make sure that it's DOT approved and that you check the expiration date. Yes, helmets do expire. Typical expiration date is between five and seven years. Visit our website at ohv.utah.gov for more helmet information. Utah State Parks, adventures for everyone. Hi there, welcome back to At Your Leisure. I'm Reagan Ledbetter. We're doing a little shock and awe today at Hillside Tire and Service. We're gonna go over and talk to Tom about the shock part. I'll show you the awe part in a minute. Hi Tom, Hi, how, how are, are you? you? Good. All right, I need everything there is to know about shocks. They're expensive. <laughs> It's not so much going out, it's just whatever application you're using the vehicle for, um, just to make sure you have the right equipment. So if you're going to be something that's doing severe off-roading and stuff, you definitely want to have something that's really heavy duty. Um, they make different grades of it, they make reservoir shocks, all that type of thing. If you're going to be an average Joe like myself that would go down there every once in a while go on a trail, just your, you can upgrade one step up from the factory stuff and, and be good to go. Okay. Basically they're designed to keep your tires flat on the ground and to take the abuse of the road. So you know how some people go up to the car and they push on it to see if the shocks are working? Does that work? They're just testing to see if it has an alarm system. They're probably going <laughs> to steal the car. Um, today's vehicles, probably not so much anymore. The way the suspensions are, they're a lot stiffer, so it doesn't really do that. You know, back in the 80s and stuff, you got those big boats, the Continentals and the Cadillacs and Lincolns or whatever. Right. You can bounce on those things and it would just sit there and bounce forever. That's one way you could but tell on the old vehicles. But that's not the official test? Not anymore, no. Okay. No, you just go by, you wear your tires, um, you go by the look of the shock or the strut and go off mileage per se. Yep. All right. Realistically, the only way to tell you a strut or shock is bad, one, if it's leaking, kind of like this little gentle fellow here. Oh. You can see all the dirt in the... So what happens, it leaks out of the seal, it coats the casing of it, and then your dirt and road grime just attaches to it. It's like a flying on sticky tape per, per se. So that would be one way of telling you, hey, this shock or strut is leaking, it's time to change them or upgrade. Um, the other way is just if they're damaged. So if you get one where the casing, like on the black part there, is damaged, dented or whatever, or the mount is broken, um, that'd be another way of saying, hey, it's time to get new shocks or struts at that time. Will or, I know if my shocks are damaged? Sometimes yes, sometimes no. This is average. So if you look at this thing, there's nothing wrong with it other than mileage. Um, so some people say, like Monroe puts out something saying that you can replace them at, after 50,000 miles. I think that's a little extensive. I think you can do more like 90 to 100,000 miles on most of your vehicles out there. So if I'm an adventurous driver and I like to, you know, go down to Moab or do whatever, would I come to you to say, do I need extra shocks? Can you fix me up with some oh, heavy duty shocks? You bet. You and, bet. And then you we can do all that stuff. I mean, obviously, if you're out playing around with your vehicle and stuff, you definitely want something more than just a factory original thing. And most of the time, you're probably going to have something that's lifted. So you're going to have some form of a lifted shock, right. which is just going to add support to the vehicle. So. so you can help me if I'm a super adventurer or just awesome. regular old you bet. gal. We'll get you bouncing everywhere. All right. Head on over to Hillside Tire and Service. Tom will hook you up. All right. Now for the awe. All right. I promised awe. This is the awe. Darren's dog, Pudge. Oh, she's so cute. Oh, she's the awe. More at your leisure ahead. Pull harder, 
and leave everyone else behind. With an impressive 154 horsepower, combined with 113 foot-pounds of tire-spinning torque, the Maverick X3 absolutely rockets off the line, going from 0 to 60 in 4.9 seconds. All thanks to a turbocharged, intercooled Rotax ACE engine. So get ready to wait for everyone else to catch up. Are you ready for some rodeo? July 13th, 14th, and 15th is the Ute Stampede Rodeo in Nephi, Utah. 8 p.m. nightly, more than 2,000 new seats added to that amazing facility. Cotton Rosser, the legend, brings the livestock to challenge the RCA Cowboys. The entertainment, the Flying Ute Flying Cowboys, along with Emmanuel Latza, who will be there to perform acrobatics over Mexican fighting bulls. July 13th, 14th, 15th, we'll see you at the Ute Stampede. Me and my mom get, got the sticks for our campfire. He uses sticks, gasoline, and matches. My grandpa usually puts gasoline on it and put the match. That could kill you with, it could be very dangerous. Yeah, my dad cut his hand with a hatchet right here. Welcome back to At Your Leisure. We have left Penguich Lake and about 15 miles away, we're here at the mouth of Mammoth Caves. Yep, and there's, you can get here by ATV or car, Jeep, whatever you'd like, and uh, come down here and just, just check all this stuff out. There's, there, these caves go every which direction. It's, the kids absolutely love it. It's really fun and it's, it's a beautiful area. I guess these are old lava tubes, right? Yeah, that's what we've been told. Yeah, we're excited to get down there and start exploring. I, I hear it's pretty cool. Well, cool, that's cool. a good word. <laughs> cool, yes, temperature-wise as well. So let's get to it. It's pretty nice. There's two caves there. There's one that's not, that's only maybe a quarter mile deep, and then the other, and I think it's around three quarters to a mile deep. It's just out in the, out in the forest. I guess I was kind of expecting that you would kind of walk into the cave, but you go down, it's all underground. It was a great break from the heat. It was nice and cool down there. And like, there was a lot of, there was a lot of like challenges. Like, it's really narrow too. Yeah. And you had to go like under, and maybe you had to jump over rocks. And it was really Adults might have to crawl to get through the end on one part. I thought that it was very difficult because Half the time you were, well most of the time actually, you were like on your knees almost, like trying to get through. But we saw the light and we were just like, we're almost there, so why not keep on going? Oh, let's keep going deeper. <laughs> uh, I'm not a geologist, but my understanding is it's liquid magma just pouring through the earth and left these tunnels behind. I like it because there's a lot of challenges and you're with your family and there's just a lot of challenges that you can do together and it brings the family together. Well, we've had a great time here at Mammoth Caves exploring. They, they go all over the place and what's nice is it's hot outside, but it's really cool inside these caves, right? It is. It's amazingly cool. And I would guess that these caves go on forever. We're not quite brave enough to go in some of these. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much if it gets over about three feet, I'm done. Yeah, that's a, that's a little too much. But make sure you do bring a flashlight. It, it is very dark down here. Yeah, and you can, you can look into little holes and different things like this. It's really easy to find. If you just stay on Highway 143, just about five miles south of Panguitch Lake, there's a left-hand turn that brings you to Mammoth Creek. So you follow that all the way past Mammoth Creek and about 10 miles down or so, there's a sign, left-hand turn to go to the Mammoth Caves. Yep, pretty simple. Yep. But while we're still exploring, Reese Stein is going to take you to the Wild Horse and Burrow Festival in Farmington. Yeah, and that's our trailhead adventure brought to you by RockyMountainATVMC.com, the place to go get all of your motorcycle and ATV accessories. I'm Reese Stein, at your leisure, at the 19th Annual Utah Wild Horse and Burrow Festival, where the kids are showing off the Mustangs they brought from wild to mild. Just a few weeks ago, these yearling Mustangs were running wild in Utah's West Desert. Today, they're headed to a good home, thanks to the dedication and love of a group of Utah youngsters. 
very tough. She even kicked me one time in the first three days. So I had to deal with that. But after time, she got a lot better. Maddie Emily of Fillmore is one of 17 youngsters who was willing to tame her wild Mustang, and they didn't give her a lot of time. 60 days, and it was a long process, but each day we got better and better. In just 60 days, the kids have these horses ready for the big show at the Legacy Event Center in Farmington. Each youth designs a unique series of challenges for their horse. Hannah Rogers ends her routine by pulling a rabbit out of her saddlebag, placing it on her red roan Lyria's back, and reading it a bedtime story. Just to get her des desensitized and get her used to like different scary stuff. These yearlings can't be ridden yet, but Maddie saddles Ivy up with the trophy she won as the Hinkley Utah Rodeo Queen. She has trained seven Mustangs and shown six. After the show, the horses will be auctioned off. I get them out of the facility and that's all that matters. She wasn't too wild. She still had a little, she was nervous and scared. But within, I touched her the first day, she didn't enjoy that. 12-year-old Kaylee Wanlitz of St. George has brought along a huge pit crew of parents, siblings, and cousins to set up her elaborate course to show off her Pinto Philly breeze. We went through a car wash, which is <laughs> a noodles with PVC pipe with the noodles. And then she went over some jumps and a tarp and poles. And then I, I took the lead rope off and she went over a bridge and we stopped. It's to show that she is confident in herself and that she's trusting me and that she can do hard things. There was a lot of uh, ups and downs and emotion. I really feel Kaylee learned a lot about herself in this and that the horses mimic their emotions. And so if she went out feeling pressured or stressed out, the horse would be pressured and stressed out too. Right, so yeah, she, yeah. She learned a lot. This is her first time showing a horse ever being involved in any kind of horse show or horse training. So she did great. It, it was definitely more horse than we're used to. Like meaning we every day, multiple times through the day, but she did awesome. After so much effort, giving these horses up for adoption can be traumatic, but maybe not for Kaylee. Actually, I'm try going to try and be the highest bidder so I can take her back home. All right. Well, good luck to you. Thank you. The kids are compensated for their efforts and, in addition, get the bulk of the auction money. Maddie Emily took home an extra $375 when Ivy was sold. But the biggest reward is building that special relationship with the horse. I think the hardest thing was to build her confidence. I mean, and there's still more confidence that needs to be built. But just building her confidence and having her do stuff. <laughs> oh, man, good mom. Who's this? This is my little sister. All right. You going to be out there with a horse pretty soon? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe a future trainer. And, oh yes, Kaylee Wallace's dad coughed up enough cash so she could realize her dream and keep Breeze. Reese Stein, At Your Leisure, Farmington. Whether you ride mud, rocks, dunes, or trails, Polaris has a razor to match your passion. Unequaled power unrivaled suspension, unmatched agility, and unbeatable comfort. Everything you need to chase memories and catch them. Find your razor at Polaris.com. Too often we find ourselves in shoes like these, or these. Wouldn't it be nice to change into something more like this, or this? How about these? Put on whatever shoes you prefer and come to Beaver County. We have exactly the adventure you need to put under them. So the next time you want to change out of these, come to Beaver County where you can jump into a pair of these. Beaver County, Utah. Lace up for adventure. Family time. Friend time. Your time. You've been thinking about getting a machine, but which one is right for you? An ATV. Side by side, 
or dirt bike. Stedman's Recreation has Utah's largest selection of Honda, Polaris, Yamaha, and Beta machines. See them all at Stedman's Recreation in Tooele. Need a tune-up, new tires, or want a winch? Stedman's Service Department can help. Stedman's Recreation in Tooele. You may think it's 300 miles out here, but remember, it's only 30 miles back. Look south to adventure. Look south to beauty. Look south to San Juan County. Out here, the road goes on forever, and what you'll find will change how you see the world. Climb on your OHV and discover forgotten landscapes and vistas that challenge the imagination. From Blanding and Monticello to the cliff faces of Monument Valley, we're open and ready for you to explore. San Juan County, Utah's Canyon Country. Welcome back to At Your Leisure. We are still at Panguitch Lake and now we are actually fishing on the lake. Yes, and this is one of the top 10 uh, trout fisheries in the country. And it's kind of a secret because there's not, there's not that many people out here and it's an absolutely gorgeous lake. But there's tiger trouts, rainbows, cutthroats, and what there isn't are mosquitoes. Yes, we haven't seen a one, which is awesome. <laughs> So what we've done here, we were with our guide, Matt, who's from Adventure Resorts, and he has told us that this is the spot right here. So he said, you know, it's we, ha it's, we have to catch them, but yeah. he's put us on the spot, so we are gonna catch some fish. And while we do that, why don't you take a look at our calendar of events? And the first thing we have coming up is the Ute Stampede Rodeo down in Juab County in Nephi. Awesome, that should be a lot of fun. Yeah, they have all kinds of things to do down there. It's an awesome rodeo, plus they have bull jumping. Which looks absolutely insane to me. <laughs> <laughs> Just remember that's July 13th, 14th, and 15th, and you can check it out at utestampederodeo.com. Now this week's sticker winner is a pint-sized version of me, I think. He's got his Jeep already and with his AYL sticker on it. Perfect. And he's won four tickets to Fast Cart so he can go down and they have three stores, Ogden, Provo, and Salt Lake to go race the go-karts. He'll have a great time. Yep. Now let's take a look at next week's show. Next week, AYL is rafting the Southwest. Where do Red Rock and Whitewater meet? Chad and Rhea will show us. It's a first-person view of some of the most spectacular landscapes in the West, and you won't want to miss it. All that and more in seven days. Well, as always, next week's show looks great. Yep, and not as good as this pizza. <laughs> it does look good. I haven't eaten it yet. A, a day of adventure always gets the uh, the stomach moving, doesn't yes, it? Yes, always. I wish the fish would have been as hungry as we are. Yeah, right that would have been that would have been fun. But the Penguin Lake Resort is is a really cool place. They have cabins you can rent that are gorgeous. They're fun little cabins, and uh, you can also buy them as an investment property as well. But you got fishing and you got ATVing and you've got horseback riding. There's all this fun stuff to do right from here. And you know, it's hotter than Hades in Salt Lake right now. And it's gorgeous here. They have a great pizza oven here, a full restaurant, boat rentals. You know, even the drive over here from Panguitch is probably 15 minutes, but it was beautiful drive. It's just a slice of heaven up here. It's so pretty. So we've had a wonderful time and as the name suggests, Adventure Resort, there is adventure everywhere. And speaking of adventure... Get out and create your own adventure. At your leisure. Abondanza! <laughs> but not at the same time. I'm... I'm oh. <laughs> I'm oh. I'm oh. But not at the same time. <laughs> okay, who's going first? You. <laughs> okay. <laughs>